Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Dawood Yaseen. Alhamdulillah, Ramadan Mubarak. We thank Allah for allowing us to make it to the last 10 nights of this blessed month and we ask Allah to open up and shower us with all of his blessings, unique blessings that are part of the last 10 days of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, we are in a, we are in a blessed time of the year. Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah for his generosity with all of us. That generosity extends to the organizers from MCC and allowing us to uh, gather in this way and facilitating for us to gather uh, in this way. Um, I'd like to talk about this week, um, you know, in, in our time together. Um, when I first became Muslim that first year I made Hajj, I was able to, uh, um, I was in Medina and I bought a CD uh, of Quran. Um, you know, obviously at that time I couldn't understand um, <clears throat> Arabic, but it just the Quran had a profound impact on me. Um, you know, before I could even understand what was happening. Um, and maybe you've heard me talk about that before, but it was one of the things that actually drew me to Islam. Um, but anyway, I bought this CD of a, of a, of a young boy. Um, uh, his name was Muhammad Barak, I believe his name uh, was. He was about 13 years old. He was leading Tarawih. Um, and the CD, it was just, it, it was incredible, just melodious uh, recitation, something that I've just never been exposed to and never heard before. And it just, you know, his, his, his recitation was just um, something that just spoke to, to, to my soul. And I think from there, um, that led me into uh, Surah Al Yusuf being one of my favorite surahs of Quran because what I take from the surah is that it, it's Allah explaining to us the realities of a family dynamic. You have Yaqub alayhi salam, a prophet, uh, and his sons, and then the dynamic that uh, transpires between his sons. Uh, many of us uh, are familiar with that story, but um, you know, it, it, one of the things I think is an incredible takeaway, uh, there are many uh, takeaways from the story. One is just the, the, the tadbir, the, the planning of Allah, of how Yusuf is um, you know, sent through this very difficult trial, but then ends up uh, at the end in a position that he could have never you know, uh, imagined or thought of. Um, and, and just what he endures through that and his trust in Allah throughout that. However, um, what I want to mention though is, you know, when we think about um, ourselves and our relationship to Allah and our um, uh, inclination to do wrong and our doing wrong, um, we should not uh, uh, beat ourselves up, so to say, uh, about that. We're not angelic in our nature and this is something that is obvious. Now, why do I say that? I say that because if you have the children of a prophet, Yaqub alayhi salam, and this type of plotting and planning is happening at that level, then what can we expect from ourselves, right? Who are not the children uh, of prophets, um, you know, of a prophet uh, alayhi salam, Yaqub alayhi salam. So again, when I think about this story, I think about this in that context that we have to be uh, merciful with ourselves uh, when, we, when we wrong ourselves or we wrong others. Um, because that propensity exists inside of all of us. How we respond to it, how we stop, that's a totally different conversation. And that's something that we need to also take from uh, this story as well too. But let's uh, look at this story here uh, just for a minute. So right from the beginning, in verses four and five, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sets, um, you know, for us the reality of the surah, where Allah says in the surah, um, uh, it's on the tongue of, uh, of Yusuf alayhi salam, where Yusuf alayhi salam says to his father, um, where, where <coughs> excuse me, where Yusuf alayhi salam says to his father, إِذْ قَالَ يُوسُفُ لِأَبِيهِ يَا أَبْتِ إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ عَشْرَ كَوْكَبًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمْرَ رَأَيْتُهُمْ لِي سَاجِدِينَ uh, Oh my father, I have seen uh, 11 uh, uh, stars, the sun and the moon, I have seen them prostrating uh, to me. Yaqub right, alayhi salam responds, قَالَ يَا بُنَيْ لَا تَقْصُسْ رُؤْيَكَ لِإِخْوَتِكَ فَيَكِيدُونَ لَكَ كَيْدَ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لِلْإِنسَانِ عَدُوٌ مُبِينَ Right? Do not convey, do not reveal, do not tell this uh, dream to your brothers because they will plot against you. They will plot against you. And what's interesting here is I feel that when Allah then transfers this 
uh, uh, right? For yakiduna laka kaida, Yaqub says that they will begin to plot against you. But then the next word, the next part of the surah, the same verse, sorry, the same verse, the same ayah is inna shaytana lil insani adu wa mubin. That shaytan is to the human beings a clear enemy. Now, that means that there are there are the whisperings and the 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 calling from shaitan for us to wrong ourselves or to wrong others. And I think that's something that's very clear that is here. Now, when we talk about this um, story uh, of Yusuf alayhi salam, I'm not going to go into detail, but because there's one thing I want to talk about in terms of what I believe is a principle that Allah subhanahu wa taala is conveying to us in that story, and we'll talk about that in a minute. However, when we look at this. Um, at this story in the situation that uh, Yusuf finds himself in right now uh, When I talked about this in the first week in week one in my lesson that the Quran thinking of the Quran as a mean of guidance in our lives Thinking of the Quran as a means of guidance in our lives. How is this story of Surah Al Yusuf and specifically in this beginning right here? How is it? What's the message? What is the 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 the, the message around ethics or morals or and then what is the principle? Because like I said, this Quran is teaching us principles. In my opinion, the principle that we are dealing with here in this surah, in the beginning of the surah right now, is one of envy. And the, the, the ruination that can be caused from envy. Such to a point that the brothers were taken because of their fear of a father, um, giving more deference to Yusuf alayhi salam, that the brothers were planning and had actually insp uh, conspired to take his life. Now, one of them said, no, that's not what we should do. We'll throw him in a well. Um, and he'll be taken off by someone. Uh, and that's actually what transpires. Um, however, they come up with a plan. They tell their father, they take him out, and they come up with a plan that um, they're going to tell their father that a wolf ate him. They come back um, after their outing, um, and they bring a sh Yusuf shirt to Yaqub alayhi salam, and they present it to him. And what I find is really interesting in here is that when a, a, a um, kind of a wrongdoing is happening, we cannot think of every single detail that is here. And there's something that happens, a detail that is you know, overlooked that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately, I'm sorry, that you, uh, Yaqub alayhi salam immediately understands that this is a lie of what they're saying. A wolf did not eat Yusuf alayhi salam. This is what he conveys to them, right? This is something that you're making up. And then how does he understand that? Because when the Quran talks about it, right, that the, that they, they, they bring on his shirt or they put on his shirt, bidam in kevib. Bidam in kathib, with a false blood. So they bring a shirt, Yusuf shirt, to Yaqub alayhi salam. They present it to him. They say a wolf has eaten him. And then I was reading in the tafsir, and uh, some of the commentators said that Yaqub's uh, response was that this is, must have been a merciful wolf. And the children, the sons were perplexed. A merciful wolf. Think about that for a moment. How could this wolf, right? How could you bring this shirt to me? And this shirt is covered with blood, but yet there are no tears on the shirt and there are no traces of any type of uh, uh, scuffling or tussling, uh, um, you know, that would have indicated that this actually transpired in a way that the sons had um, uh, called it. Now, the interesting thing is that all of this, as I said, is, 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 is dr driven by envy. And the role that the shirt plays uh, in this, when it's driven uh, by envy, um, is one that is, as I said, brings about ruination, um, uh, um, you know, at this point. I want to take a moment um, and just share with you what Imam Ghazali uh, says about envy. He says, envy is greater uh, than miserliness. He says, envy is greater than miserliness. He says, the simple miser is one who is stingy toward others with his possessions, right? That's a bakhil. I have something, I don't want to share it with others, that's miserliness. He says, however, the greater miserliness is the one who is stingy with Allah's favors upon his servants. The one who is stingy with Allah's favors upon his, capital H, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's servants, right? Favors that are not even his, but from the fast treasures of Allah's omnipotent um, power. The envious person is the one who is pained 
when Allah Ta'ala, Allah Almighty, from his treasures of his omnipotent power, bestows one of his servants with wealth, knowledge, or love in the hearts of people, or any kind of good fortune. He is pained to the point, meaning the envious person, is pained to the point where he wishes that Allah's favors would be taken away from that person, even if the same favor would not transfer to him as a result. This is really the pinnacle of wickedness and about which the Prophet ﷺ said that envy devours good deeds just as fire devours woods. Now, this is where, uh, again, we're understanding this now, right? Envy and why it is so blameworthy is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bestow his gifts upon whoever he wants, however he wants, whenever he wants, in a manner of however he wants. No one is there to say that person X or Y should not have certain things because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed it. Now, whether those things are beneficial for them or detrimental to them, that's something that exists in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we find that type of explanation in Baqarah that perhaps it is that you love something and is uh, harm harmful, perhaps it is that you detest something, perhaps it is you detest something that is good for you, and perhaps it is that you love something uh, and it is detrimental to you. Allahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamu, right? So we don't know whether these things are, are, blame, are, are, are beneficial or not. However, he continues here by saying that the envious person himself is one who suffers punishment and receives no mercy. May Allah protect us from this state. He is in continuous torment, for there will never be a lack of those among his contemporaries and acquaintances on whom Allah has bestowed knowledge or wealth or esteem. Thus the envious person continually suffers punishment in this world right up to his death. May Allah protect us from that. And the punishment of this world to come is even greater and more severe. In fact, the servant does not arrive at truth faith as long as he does not love for his brother and his rest of the Muslims what he loves for himself. So think about that for one moment. This envy, uh, the ruining uh, uh, um, ability of this envy um, and the punishment, right? The constant punishment that a person finds themselves in. Why? Because like you said, there will never be a shortage of Allah giving wealth or knowledge or the love of, of, of this person in the hearts of others. That'll never stop. So imagine that every time a person witnesses this, every time they see this, they're torn up inside because of an envy that they have. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, 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 talks about this in protecting, to allow us to protect ourselves from it. And I, and it's just, to me, it's just so amazing that he brings this story out, not just as an average person, but it's something that even afflicted the sons of Yaqub alayhi salam, right? And not to someone outside, but to their own brother, their own flesh and blood. And these are the stories I said in Quran. These are not something that just happened a long time ago with Yusuf alayhi salam. These are not asatir al-awwaleen. These aren't just stories of the ancients. They are there for us to be able to ground ourselves morally, ethically, and to have principles upon which we live that are shown over and over and over again in the Quran. And to me, this is one of the clearest examples. This is one of the, the clearest stories. Now, the interesting thing is the role that this shirt plays. And inshallah ta'ala, in the coming week, I'll play, I will talk about, you know, um, uh, another story when the shirt um, is dealt with, but it's another blameworthy and another characteristic um, that can bring us to ruination. And it also has to do uh, with a shirt. And all of this, you know, came from a conversation I had with a friend of mine, Dr. Jibril Latif, who was just saying to me the other day, he said, That's, he said it's amazing that this, the shirt is mentioned in three different places uh, in the Quran, uh, different realities in each one of them, he says, but it's as if there is, um, a message that is being uh, uh, conveyed through this shirt. And then looking on it a bit further, as I said, this first part that I found that I just wanted to share with you was this idea that the shirt is uh, um, um, uh, represents the story um, to, to, to highlight the idea of envy and how envy can be so ruinous uh, for us. And as I said, to this level where it's even afflicting the sons of a prophet to someone as close as their brother. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. 
and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his favor on us and protect us from envy and protect us from, from, from miserliness, right? Miserliness with our own goods and that we may never be envious um, with the gifts that Allah bestows upon his, um, his, his servants in a manner that he sees fit and how he sees fit with whom he sees fit. And um, again, especially in this month, I, I, I pray that Allah showers all of us with his unique gifts that are sent down in these last 10 days. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a bless us to see the night of power and may um, you know the reality of the supplication when Aisha radiallahu anha she asked the 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 Prophet sallallahu um, you know what what should I uh, recite uh, on Laylatul Qadr he said to her alayhi salam he said uh, Allahumma anta afuwan tuhibu afu fa'fu anna Allahumma anta afuwan to hibu afu fa'fu anna. Oh Allah, you are the pardoner. You love to pardon. Please pardon us. So we seek Allah's pardon uh, in these last um, nights. Alhamdulillah, this is one of the odd nights. May Allah give us the strength to be able to stand uh, and worship Him uh, in this evening, uh, seeking out Laylatul Qadr. And again, my uh, thanks to the, the the MCC community for hosting this this month and facilitating. Um, you know, this um, this program. And so may Allah continue to bless you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.